All right, I'm gonna try to do a revival series on this 72 Maverick Grabber I just picked up. It's a factory V8, 72 Grabber. See the hood up there. The reason it was parked is because it got rear-ended. And it's pretty bad. This car will never be right again unless you do some serious work to it. But as far as I can tell, that's the original paint. It was blue with gold stripes. You can see somebody spray painted over it. It's mostly original. Right now it has the wrong seats in it, but I have the factory grabber seats. Floor shifter. The reason I bought this is one, because it was an extremely good deal. And two, I'm restoring a 72 myself. And this thing popped up on the marketplace for 300 bucks with a clean title. And there is a really hard to find front bumper. So what I'm doing right now, the engine is stuck. The guy said that they let it sit outside for a little bit with the scoops out of the hood without a carb on it and it got rain down it. And if you look down the intake, it's pretty nasty. So I started by pulling the plugs and to my surprise, they're clean, except for our treble cylinder, which is the very back on the driver's side. I just popped the belt off, and stuck my ratchet on there, and I've gotten it to rock back and forth, almost a full revolution, so we're getting somewhere. And I think with that much trouble, the rush should clean out of there, and I'll be able to move on to trying to find a carburetor and see if I can fire this thing up. It's got some cool turbines on it, which happen to be the same exact wheels that I have on my car. I passed all this junk. It's in here. It's been a big project. Gone through and replaced the floors. Done some quarter work, had some dents in the top. Got my dash redone, it's all dusty now. And this is a factory 72 grabber, but it's got an 80s model 5 0 Mustang or Ford F 150. Actually, it's an F 150 motor because the there's provision for the dipstick back here, but it has the front cover off the original car, so the dipstick's up there now. And it's got a Borg Warner T5 with my homemade shifter on there out of a Mustang. So it's going to be fun. You can see I got the same ones. And back there somewhere, I have some traction bars and some other stuff that came off of this when I got it. There's my other grabber hood. So let's see what we can do on that car. All right, we've got progress. Turns over completely by hand. I just stuck a battery in it and tried it and it rolls over. I'll show you guys. Radio even works. We got dome light. And I stuck a plug up here. That would be a loose spark. Looks like we still got it. It's got a spark, it turns over. I'm going to clean the plugs up and put them back in. We've got nothing shooting out of the trans cooler lines yet, but. I'm going to see if I can find a carburetor. I don't think I have any. Well, I know I don't have any two-barrel Fords, but I might be able to adapt something real quick. So, all right. I've got a carburetor on there. Let's see if it's going to start up. Before I do, I just want to explain this is not the right carburetor for this. It is a Motocraft two-barrel, but this is off of a 79 Ford F-150 with a 351 modified so it bolts up the same 
fuel lines in the same spot. But when it comes to the linkage over here, we've got some issues. So and this is hooked up right now. And this is a reman carb, but I've noticed some stuff is broken on it. The choke's not connected, so we don't have anything going on here. We've got fuel. Got a new fuel pump on there. I stuck the radiator back in and it's holding water for now. I'm just gonna dump some gas into the bowl and crank it over and see what happens. Come on. Hmm. I'll have to do something about that throttle cable so I can try to keep it running. You could probably hear when we first started it up that it was sucking a lot of air. It was really noisy. We figured out it was a big vacuum leak between the spacer plate and the motor craft I put on there. Uh, we made our own gasket to retrofit and make it work and uh, it's running great now. <laughs> see if it moves only got front brakes aired up the front tires this one's hissing air out so I don't have much time got the tarp off of it Let's see what happens Time in ten years. Oh, more button fell off. Underneath the car, transmission pan down, and I think our problem is going to be that filter. I believe it's plugged up, and she's just not sucking up fluid. Did a some quick research online, and a guy had the same problem, and it turned out being the filter. Uh, otherwise, I can't really see what would cause it to lose all gears. I know it's common for C4s to lose forward gears, but to lose reverse all at the same time and then let it sit and then it gains it back for a second. I feel like that has to do with a clogged filter that's barely getting any. Uh, when you shut off, it's able to not suck all that debris up in there and it's able to get some fluid by. When you fire it up, it circulates that and you get gears for a second and then it goes away. I already cleaned the pan out. It was pretty grungy. There was some big chunks of hopefully not banned in there. But, you know, that's probably what it is. Uh, we'll get this filter off and see what it looks like. Yeah. I'd say that might be a problem. 
I don't think any fluid's gonna get through that. That would explain the no gears. Sluggish shifting when it did go into gear. Hopefully the transmission is not burned up. Let's see if I can blow this out. This might be an old one that has a mesh in it, brass mesh, so I might actually be able to clean it, put it back together and see if that's a problem before I go spend the money on it. I might actually have one lying around in a box. We'll see. All right, I got a new problem. Took the filter off in the spring and maybe the plunger fell out with it. It fell into the transmission fluid but all I found in the fluid was the spring, and there's not really anywhere else where it could have gone. I ran a magnet all over the ground, I ran a magnet in the pan, and it's not there. It's not up in the port, so maybe the previous owner didn't have it in there. I don't know. Maybe I just missed it. But I looked up some pictures online of what it's supposed to look like, and I got a piece of stock that's the same diameter as the spring, which looks like what it should be, so I just need to do some grinding and make myself one. All right, here's what I came up with. Got it ground down, got the top recessed. I'm about to cut it off in the bandsaw and see if it fits. All right, let's throw it in and see what happens. <laughs> 